NerdRotic.com. Welcome back to NerdRotic. My name is Gary Beekler, and I come to you from NerdRotic.com. And we are here to talk about Star Trek Discovery Season 2. It premieres today, and the reviews are starting to come in. And, you know, let the shilling begin. TV Guide says, Star Trek Discovery Season 2 is the best the show has ever been. And I can hear you right now. That doesn't necessarily make them a shill. Maybe they actually liked the episode, and maybe they did. But it's always good when you go to these websites to see who owns them. You do a little Google search and you can find out. And, well, I'm going to go over the review first, and then we'll go to who owns TV Guide, but I bet you can guess. Star Trek Discovery's inaugural season was faced with a seemingly impossible feat. The CBS All Access was tasked with delivering a fresh new take that appeased a hardcore fan base and remained true to the franchise's 50-year history while also appealing to a Trek noob who wouldn't know Voyager from Deep Space Nine. Although Season 1 stumbled in its efforts to remain tightly within canon while also telling an exciting new story, the show managed to pull off a commendable first run thanks to a charming bridge crew. Really? Let's stop right there. Name the bridge crew. I still can't name the bridge crew. We had Nodding Crewman 1, Nodding Crewman 2, Nodding Affirmingly Crewman 3, and Nodding Intensely Crewman 4, and Robot Girl. A delectably villainous leader in Captain Lorca, Jason Isaac's impression of George W. Bush, and the unapologetic love of science and adventure which has come to define the franchise as a whole. I mean, who can forget Sonar in Space? Who couldn't forget Holding a Phaser Backwards? Building on that, Discovery really hits its stride in Season 2. With the Klingon War on the back burner, the series is finally able to breathe. As a result, delivers a refreshing sophomore run that just feels like the weight of the world has been lifted off its shoulders. Wow, the more and more I hear about this, the more and more we're going to get to Star Trek Discoveryville. After receiving a distress call from the USS Enterprise, the Discovery crew ditches its plan to pick up a new captain on Vulcan in order to help their fellow Federation officers in need. Starfleet's most prized ship is offline after suffering a catastrophic meltdown while tracking one of the seven red signals that has mysteriously appeared in space. With his ship on the sidelines, Captain Pike, Anson Mount, takes the helm of Discovery for an important rescue mission, thus kicking off a thrilling adventure in deep space. This reads like the back of a Blu-ray. Bringing in an iconic character like Pike could have been disastrous, but Discovery somehow makes it work. Somehow, huh? Really. I wonder if that somehow is you possibly getting paid or working for the corporation that makes this show? He's seamlessly woven into the narrative, bringing in exhilarating new energy that never overpowers the series' core cast. Mount's Pike is dashing, charismatic, and genuinely likable, but not without his faults. He's very much the man Gene Roddenberry envisioned so many decades ago, but never feels like a relic from the past. He's exactly what Discovery, both the crew and series as a whole, needs right now. Are you saying you actually need a white male as a lead who's good? Duh, no. Oh my god. Don't tell the Drekkies. They might get upset. But he's also just a fraction of what makes Season 2 such an enjoyable experience. With Discovery learning to let loose and have fun, Season 2 utilizes its arsenal of delightful characters in a way that it never could before. Owing to that is the adorably wonderful Tilly. Adorably wonderful. Who wrote this? Last season's Miss Congeniality, whose expanded role is like a much-needed serotonin boost. Brilliant, funny, and bursting with nerdy optimism. The new season finds her finally coming into her own as a confident leader, and the transition is pure joy to watch unfold. Equally amusing is Tig Nataro's Denise Reno, the USS Hiawatha's brilliant chief engineer, brilliant chief engineer, whose deadpan humor easily makes her the season's low-key gem. Yep, it's it's sounding like Star Trek Discoveryville. Man, are they laying this thing thick or what? Oh. But among a diverse group of amiable personalities, Michael Burnham's Sonequa Martin-Green remains the true heart and soul of the series. It's mostly through her eyes that we learn about the world that Discovery has created. And in season two, her story again takes center stage. So... For those of you who thought that they were going to dial back Mikey Spock a little bit to bring in Anson Mount and Spock, <laughs> they're going to double, triple down like they always do. Again, the show is not out. It could be the greatest thing since slight spread. And if it is, I'll admit I'm wrong, but uh, let's go on. This is too much fun to read. With the exploration of Burnham's past comes the inevitable arrival of her adoptive brother, Spock. Ugh. Ethan Peck. 
and their family drama sets the groundwork for an ongoing journey in the new season. Linked through the same visions of a mysterious red angel, the broken dynamic breathes new life into Spock. A character... Whoa, 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 whoa. Breathes new life into Spock because Spock was this tired character. Was he problematic? Was Spock heteronormative? Was he patriarchal? Was he masculine? What was wrong with Spock? I'm going to continue reading now. A character who's been explored inside and out. Having been around for five decades, but Discovery presents a different Spock. Someone on the losing side of an internal battle between reason and logic. He's not the Vulcan you know from Star Trek the original series. And no, nor is this the show we know from Star Trek the original series. Nor are these the characters, the dynamic, the aesthetics. The Klingons. Nor does he need to be. With the latest iteration set years before the events of the original series, the show found the loophole it needed to introduce the bearded, disheveled version into official canon. And it's handled with great care. Now listen, I'm not against any bearded person except for Spock. Except for this one. Shave right now, but don't use a Gillette. By all means, Discovery isn't perfect. It's still working to find the natural balance between being good and being bad. Oh, I'm sorry. Nostalgia and modernity. But season two takes a careful, bold, gripping, undeniably fun stab at it. And in turn, it's the best it's ever been. There was something about that review that sounded familiar to me. And then I remembered I had read a couple reviews on a previous live stream. We go to comicbook.com. Star Trek Discovery Season 2 premiere review. More confident, more adventurous. And there's that word confident and adventurous again. Just going to read you one paragraph here. Alex Kurtzman directs this episode. Oh, great. Klutzman is the co-creator and co-destroyer and showrunner of Discovery and Star Trek. He's also known for co-writing the 2009 Star Trek film reboot and its sequel, Star Trek Into Lameness. His past Trek pedigree is also on display in Brothers, so this is probably going to be a giant turd. And then some. Uh-oh. The reboot films received praise for their stunning set pieces and criticism for not having much else to offer. So we're going to get more of that, probably. Kurtzman delivers on the excitement here as Brother features the most stunning action sequence ever in an episode of a Star Trek television series. But wait, there's one more that sounded familiar. Star Trek Discovery Season 2 unearths a new sense of adventure, action, wit, and color are the latest additions to the crew as Discovery returns to CBS All Access. And I'm going to read you one paragraph from here. It takes a little bit of a different angle. That starts with the new captain, Anson Mount, beams aboard as Captain Christopher Pike, a character only briefly depicted in previous Trek. Here, he's more fleshed out because he's in it more. And his gold uniform isn't the only vibrant thing around him. Pike's genial wisecracks immediately create contrast with Season 1's icy Captain Lorca. But there's a flash of steel in there, too. Another new character is the glib engineer, Commander Reno, played by the sardonic comedian Tig Natal. Taro, but the new characters don't hog all the jokes. Series regular Saru and Tilly also relax into their roles with plenty of one-liners. And it isn't just the humor on Star Trek Discoveryville giving the episode a lighter feel. Look out for an epic action scene involving sexy spacesuits and zippy space pods. At times, the premiere episode could be described as a romp. I'm sure you've guessed what's in common with all three of these websites, whether I give it away in the title or you're just smart. They're all owned by CBS. Season 2 of Discovery premieres on CBS All Access in the U.S. on January 17th and on Netflix around the world. Editors note, CBS is CNET's parent company. Full disclosure, comicbook.com as a company is owned by CBS and operates under the CBS interactive umbrella of companies. Who owns TV Guide? OpenGate bought the magazine for a dollar and received a $9.5 million loan at a low interest rate from Macrovision, which acquired the publication's parent company, Gemstar TV Guide International, in 2007. NTVB's purchase does not include the website tvguide.com, which is owned by CBS Corp. Well, there you have it, folks. Let the shilling begin. Three positive reviews from three CBS-owned websites. Are you surprised? Probably not. 
Probably not. Uh, it's Star Trek Discovery Season 1 all over again. Hell, this might be Doctor Who Season 11 all over again. We're going to be paying attention to the Rotten Tomatoes scores, and we are also going to be covering every episode of Star Trek Discovery live right after it airs, as well as doing recorded video reviews, so if you don't want to watch the live streams, those will be available for you too. You can check out our live schedule at nerdrotic.com, and I do have a couple of insiders at CBS, and the one thing I can tell you is this show has not moved the needle as far as subscribers are concerned at all and this show needs to succeed for anything to move forward and that is what a lot of people have said and i haven't seen anything different yes section 31 did get announced well it kind of got announced in november too uh star trek 4 got announced and went full steam ahead then it got canceled so we'll see we'll see what happens so everybody have a great day and may the small folks sing songs of your greatness nerderotic.com Please subscribe.